The former Congressman Albi Benitez is with us. Albi, thank you for dropping by. Judas, thank you very much. Sir, uh, let's start with some of the questions. Now. Uh, I'll start with your pronouncements. Last July 19, you said you have seen and heard enough, and the clamor of the people is there. Several days ago, you said, Bacolod, here I come. Uh, what did you hear, and what have you seen, and what are you coming for? Let, it, let me put it in perspective. Uh, you know, if you, asked, if, if you had asked me uh, January or February this year, you know, Bacolod was not in my plans. Was not, I wasn't even thinking of entering the political arena in Bacolod. As mm -hmm. early as January and February. It just happened in one of uh, our vacations. And I think uh, Congressman Paduano, together with uh, some uh, political leaders of Bacolod, I think Vladimir was there, Patrick Laxon was there, a few barangay captains. They came to visit me in, uh, we were in Lakawan. So I was on vacation, I was having uh, uh, a time out. No? And they came to see me there and uh, tried to convince me to run for Bacolod. My answer then at that time was no. no? Because I said, you know, as much as possible, I uh, am, been a provincial consultant, and I'm in business. So I was back in my private life. As early as 2019, I decided not to continue any political position. So during that time, they were convincing me to go back because they say that you know there, there is, uh, they've seen what I've done in the third district, and they would like it to continue the service, the, the things that I've done. So I said, no, not, my, not, not within my plans. And, you know, maybe uh, there was a, a, a proposal that they gave me that said, can you at least, okay, for two weeks, do not deny that you're running for Bacolod because we will float your name, okay? Ang gusto lang nila, daw sunlogon lang nila siguro ang isa katawos, Bacolod. And uh, they, they were saying, just don't deny for two weeks. So what I did was, okay, two weeks, fair enough, I can give you that. Um, the next day, you know, after that, they started you know, uh, putting it in social media. Streamers and posters came out, run, I'll be run. Mm. You know, we, we had all of these uh, streamers popping around in the city. And it kind of had a groundswell. You know? It was people from all walks of life. Uh, not just the people that I talked to, not just their friends. It was people, ordinary people. There were people also using the masako lang and painting it themselves. Mm -hmm. Run, I'll be run. And then on, there was there was this uh, groundswell, and and uh, people were already saying, you know, that's that's a, that's a good idea. You know? So, so Silinko, you know, I, I cannot make this last too long. Or ako naman ang maigo. And uh, the next couple of days, I started uh, looking at it seriously. And at one point, I said, I really need to get the pulse of the people. So, without telling anyone, no? okay, if I will ask those people who, who egged me to, to run, then of yes. course you will know the answer. So I said, I needed a balance, a neutral uh, individual to tell me what is the real pulse of, of, mm -hmm. of Bacola. Are, are they looking for a new leader? Do they want change? Gusto na sa pagbago? But who can say this but those who are representing the general public? So I think you've seen it. No? We, I went to the central market, Tanao Koto, on my own. And uh, my plan there was to uh, do a survey. Mamang, kot ko sila. Uh, what do you think about Albi running? I was trying to hide myself, no? so basi hindi man ko kilala, eh, because I, <laughs> you know I, I, I've been uh, uh, a congressman of the third district, but mm -hmm. I've never uh, run for any elected position uh, in Bacolod. Non nonetheless, that any uh, voters have voted uh, for me in Bacolod. So, amunat ani ang himo ko, no? I was just to ask around and do a simple survey. Uh, unfortunately, when I got off. People started recognizing me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just went from one entrance to the other and started to, to talk to some of the vendors. Most of them were asking me to run. 
and it was the same tune from beginning to end. And what caught me, I think, was the last vendor that I saw, an old lady, who was asking me to run in tears. So I said, you know, please run for the sake of Bacolod. And you know, that, that statement, that request, was too strong for me to neglect. It was, though it, you know, as a public servant, you cannot deny those kind of things. Now, no, you, you know, those are the things that, that uh, make a public servant uh, worthwhile. Ma call of duty. Is that the vivid picture in your mind? Yes, because that's, when you that's really happened. I think, I think it's, it, it came out in social media. Mm. I was not expecting anybody there. By chance, there was a, a media man who took a picture. No? And then when the picture went viral, uh, things started to, to get excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, excitement of Bacolod started to, be, to develop. Yes. But that was it. And from then on, um, my, my, my statements were already, uh, I'm keeping my options open. I'll go back to that later, uh, that uh, situation so, in January and why you so, decided so, to. It's not as if I planned to run for mayor you did of Bacolod. Not. There was mm -hmm. no plans at all. Yes, sir. No, it mm -hmm. just so happened. Mm -hmm. And and it's 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 a call. It's a clamor of the people that really pushed me. So it's not as if I wanted to be mayor. Mm -hmm. And also on July 19, you said Bacolod is drowning in corruption. Uh, can you cite specific instances and why yeah. that description? You know, um, the the biggest issue that I'm looking at is among the job orders that's being uh, given left and right by the city. I mean, these job orders are actually being used as a political tool. And that's exactly what I also mentioned about governance. Um, the administration is using uh, political governance as, as, a mean to as a means to run the city. Now, when I talk of political governance, it's a governing by politics. So in other words, they, they prioritize okay, uh, political decisions before true governance. And for example, the, the job orders, they, this, these are tools to use for political purposes. It's, it's designed to, to prolong their, their political position. It's designed to have a grip on the people, to, to follow their political inclination. It's designed to, to put people in check that come election or before election, you are uh, guided into a certain action. So, so these are the things that, you know, when, when you win, after you become uh, a mayor or any public uh, official, there, should no, there, should, there shouldn't be any color of your uh, uh, basic ser or government service. No. Wala na piliay, wala na niya. No? You just serve who deserves to be served. You help those who need to be helped, irrespective whether they voted for you or not. And uh, that is something that I think you know, we should all be wary about. Because that is really how I would define uh, traditional politician, mm. political pa patronage. Those are the things that, those are the activities that uh, one traditional politician would do. So it's not only about the city drowning in corruption, but drowning in patronage politics. It, uh, corrupt practices and all of the things come in together. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I, I, I'll not be uh, 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 the person to enumerate all of those things mm -hmm. that are happening. I think there will be a proper forum for that. And, uh, you know, when people say that there's none at all, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, bring it to court and all those things, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, please, it's either you're, you're not seeing these things or you're from another planet. Well, well, then of course the partisans of of Grupo Progreso and Mayor Bing would say, "Who oh, oh, may kaso siya, but he was never convicted for a single case." Yeah, you know, uh, put it this way, you know, most presidents are actually convicted convicted after their term. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. <laughs> mayor Bing has been the mayor for for yes quite some time, like eighteen years. Eighteen years. Uh huh. You are being described as a million, billionaire first, uh, but 
coming into this political exercise and you are uh, trying to portray an image of someone who wants change, but uh, people see you first as a billionaire, maalwan, gapang hatag bulig. But how do you feel about that? What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. no, uh, it, it's by nature to me. You know what I mean? If you're character is uh, the type that helps out people mm -hmm. and sometimes you know that government cannot uh, come in in time mm -hmm. or maybe provide the help that you need you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're forced to to use your personal funds or personal money yes. to help out no? and, kung, kung, you know you see the limitation of government and uh, because of that most politicians will have to use their own personal money to help it just so happens that you know I was in, in a position to be able to help a little bit more, yes, uh, because of uh, well, I guess uh, good fortune uh, during my stint as a private uh, businessman, mm -hmm. and then so I I have a little bit more to be able to help a little bit more. But isn't that a bit sad about our state of democracy? Because since 1986, it seems that we haven't you know matured because people. I, I've been talking, I did a report once for the PCIJ and uh, we kind of found out that in Negros Occidental, people don't look for the better leader. Uh, they look for the better master. Mm. So someone who is That's generous, true. someone who can promise them a job or makapalubong sang ila patay. Isn't that a bit of a tragedy in Negros Occidental? Yeah, okay. Uh, what, what we want to do is when we talk about change, it's not just changing the leaders. It's mm -hmm. not changing a leader that must maluan, must uh, hapos palapitan, hapos kwaan, and all those things. <laughs> no, it's actually the system. No? So, so, so patronage politics is about you know having a patron, and then that's where you get your help. We're trying to change the system from a patronage politics to an institutional governance. In a sense, it's not anymore an individual helping the constituent or the uh, ang gapangita, sang, sang assistants, but the institutions. So how is this? For example, no, a health program. If you are sick and you need medical assistance, what would you do? No. The first thing you'd probably do is look for, and you don't have any money to, to, to pay for that uh, uh, medical uh, uh, attention. The first thing you do is you look for a politician mm -hmm. To ask for help. Correct? That's it. So the politician will give you help. The best politician will be, I hapos ni siya kantuan. Always open and I can always get assistance from them. Wow, very good. And that's the person that we'd like to vote for. But that is still traditional politics. What, I, what I'm doing and what I've done in the third district was to change that system. You don't need to look for a patron. You don't need to look for a politician to get the assistance that you need. Which is why we have this, what we call, no chip program. Yes. The no chip program is a card. Ginakaptan mo na na. It's within your hands. Okay? When you're sick, you go straight to a hospital. You don't need to look for a patron. You don't need to look for a politician. Hindi ka na kinalan mga ayok bulig. Hindi ka na kinalan mga sang uh, politician, leader, or, or patron na mahatag sa imo. Because you can go straight to the hospital. So the institutional process, you took away uh, uh, the steps of asking because you have it already in your hands. Mm -hmm. And that's been done. It's, an it's a simple insurance system okay, that allows the person to seek assistance whenever he needs it. And so there's, there, you know, it's it's a change in system. So yes. you know, if they, they they say it's it's just a matter of changing the person in city hall, that's not it. We it's a systematic uh, uh, processing of uh, needs that has to be in place. But we Filipinos don't seem to be fond of, you know, structural changes. But you know what? You go to the third district. Mm -hmm. Go to the third district and ask. That, that is something that they uh, probably welcomed the most, mm -hmm. you know, that health program. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, 2008, 
when I first went around the third district and tried to run and and well uh, announced that I was run, running for uh, a congressman, most of the people that I meet during that uh, uh, mga maglibot ko, they were asking for medical help, medical attention. Kaya mo ginam pinaka uh, crucial nga, nga, nga problem that needs uh, attention right away. So 2008, tana na sila. Most of the requests were all medical in nature. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I said, you know, let's put up a system that you don't have to look for me. Siling ko gani, you know, my job as a politician, my job as a public servant ends when people will not look for me for help. Mm -hmm. Kaya na sa ila. Yes. And so that's what happened. You know, so uh, now when I go around the third district, there is not much medical request. It's more a salamat. Thank you na sila because of the assistance of the help that the program has given them. Can you tell us a story about that? Uh, uh, an incident you cannot forget until now. You know, uh, uh, there was one request early on. No? Uh, who, who came to me and asked for uh, medical assistance. No? Uh, they said uh, they needed medicine and uh, they were asking for help. Kaya sila kasara magbayad sa medicine. Knowing whether, well, at that time, I did not know whether it was a genuine request or a request nga though, you know, you, you, you get to meet a lot of people who do it for, for yeah. For the sake of asking so that uh, they, they can get something out of it. So I said, okay, give it to me and uh, let us uh, process it to office. And during that time, it took about a week to process the, the, the request. No. By the time we got back uh, to that person, hindi na medicine ang ginapa ngayon. Ano na? It's already a burial Oh my, patay. So which, why... I thought of it cannot be where people will need to ask for help when it comes to medical services. Mm -hmm. It has to be in Sigi that they can be able to access it. The access to medical attention, the access to medical service has to be right away. You it cannot wait. You did not grow up poor, but why do you feel for this? Uh, you know, th th during that time, I remember when I was a young boy, kung gamay pa ko, no? ang ako nga mga friends and uh, mga barkada were all people from the, the informal settlers. So mga uh, people behind our house in, in, uh, in Manila at that time. No? May mga informal settlers na sa likod. I used to hang out more often sa, sa ila than anybody else. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable. I, I don't feel like I need to be in a luxurious place to, to feel comfortable. So I guess that, that, uh, uh, that experience no, made, made me you know, uh, feel mm -hmm. the same way as they are. And, and, and even here in, in, in Negros, there's Bacolod, my, my grandfather always would say that you know, um, the best fertilizer is your footprint. Mm. in a farm. So that's why you, you have to just go and visit these people. Because eventually, you have absentee landowners. Eh. <laughs> Sa Negros. Ah. Anyway, I'll go back later to specifics of, of, of your call for change. But you are one of those congressmen, siguro, or former congressmen, na ang degree is math, mathematics. Si, uh, si Senator ka mo Coco Pimentel is a math major. Mm. Pero jutay lang kamo, ilisipon kamo. Dawdua lang gani kami. Oh, you see? Which intrigues me actually because math I hate sa una. But when I became a reporter, I learned to love numbers. And I actually still try to do computations in my head. Of answer. Uh, 56,000 times 35,000. Pila, can you do that computation in your head? <laughs> Right now, math majors use a calculator. <laughs> Why not? Because, you know, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 those things are not what defines a math major. Oh, yeah, I know. It, it's, it's how to solve problems. Um, yeah. Um, uh, most of the training in math are problem solving. Problem it's solving. It's not doing arithmetic yeah. and multiplication. Okay, may abacos mangyanik mo, no? Okay, <laughs> I ask you this. 
Some say nga ang, ang math ko no, is the closest we can get to the handwriting of God. What is math to you? Well, it's because it's precise. Mm -hmm. There is no if or but. It's, there's no uh, uh, wrong. It's always, it's a precise science. So, probably that's where it came from. But how did the numbers guide you in making your decision to run? To run for? Mm -hmm. For mayor of Bacolod City. Uh, well, it came after, no? Because after the decision, it was really more of a public call. It was really more of a, like uh, a clamor from the people. And then after that, of course, you assess your your chances. And uh, at that time, I was just looking at it. Yeah. Uh, uh, last election, no? Uh, it was like thirty-seven. 60% no, in favor of Mayor Bing. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at the 37%, most likely that will uh, not go with him. No? So ang awayan na na mo ng, ng 60% niya. So if I can get 20% or 25% from that 60%, then. Oh, that I'm is. Free. That's precise stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Like the last election, 81,000 si, ano, 81,000 si, si Giselle, Giselle. Bataba, right? Uh -huh. And then, Bing was 144,000. So there's a difference of about 63,000. So what are your odds right now? Well, I don't know. The, the ang survey ko na, well, the, the, I hear informal surveys, they say that, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, going my way. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, people looking for change is, is, is valid. Okay, okay, you know, you want uh, uh, something new. You want new blood. You want something done differently. You want new ideas. Mm -hmm. Sir, if we look at standards, uh, over nine years, sang nag uh, congressman ka in the third district. If we look at the HDI rankings, sa kada town and city under your district, what does it tell us? Human Development Index. Index. Right, uh, that's done every three years. It's uh, you know I I had to look at uh, the basis of the HDI. Um, it's done through survey, and it captures in a sense uh, uh, life expectancy, education, and uh, gross national income. No? Yes. So per capita. I'm not so familiar with the numbers. No, I tried to look for it. No, because. Uh, 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 it might be a topic to, uh, today, uh, but I couldn't find a correlation with what's happening. In, in a sense, it says that it's growing every year by point something, but what does that mean? I, I still can't understand the, the significance of those numbers. It's just, just that, okay, uh, there, there's uh, uh, improvement in uh, per capita income, mm -hmm. by people, people living longer. No? Uh, I don't know how they put in the education there. I think it's uh, how many people go to school. Mm -hmm. no? Cohort survival ratio, I think. It's, yeah. To me, uh, the, the, the way I look at it first is uh, the LGUs in the third district. No. Uh, we do a survey uh, uh, once in a while. And my survey always is, are you happy today than you were a year ago? or? Uh, two years ago, no. So it's more of uh, whether they are satisfied with uh, uh, the current leaders. No. Um, but as far as uh, the programs are concerned, as I've said, you know, we've we've, we've uh, through the assistance and and help of uh, the local mayors from the different LGUs to provide this uh, no chip this health program that we have instituted. Plus. You know, we even launched a burial program for all our constituents. Um, it, it, to me, it, 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 it serves already as an indication, especially you know, when it comes to election, when people revalidate your performance. Mm -hmm. So uh, the mere fact that uh, uh, we've been winning, you know, I've never lost an election, uh, the mere fact that uh, even if my brother ran for, for the same position without uh, uh, an opponent is a validation already of what we have done for the third district. And how about Bacolod City? What issues have you been studying about about Bacolod? 
Well, I, I mentioned because, you know, um, when, we, when we talk of direction or vision, no, it, it's designed to identify the economic driver of uh, the city. What drives Bacolod e economically? What are the things that sustains it in terms of employment, uh, uh, revenues? So, so those, those were the questions that you know, I, I keep asking people around and they don't seem to, to, to give me a, uh, uh, a clear direction of where Bacolod is going. So, so, so that, that's why I mentioned, you know, I, I think it's, it's lacking uh, a sense of uh, where will you take Bacolod five years from now, ten years from now, what will be our main economic drivers that will bring uh, the much needed employment, and instead of just providing these job orders mm -hmm. that uh, the local government is, is, is giving, you have honest to goodness livelihood or, or jobs. Uh, that that can you know uh, give people their 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 daily bread. Ang mga kinala nila sa you know kabuhi. Because there was a time when the sugar industry was actually the, I think the driver of the Bacolod economy. I don't know if it's still true now. Well, that if that is the case, you know, I've been calling for a diversification of the sugar industry. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not it's not sugar industry that we should look at but sugar cane industry sugar which is, cane which is why we uh, you know i ushered and and uh, uh, helped pass into law the sugar cane industry development act yeah I remember. because our product is sugar cane it's not mm. sugar sugar is just mm. a byproduct and my argument before was uh, what if sugar cane had a high price but sugar had a low price Okay. Will we still be better off? The answer is yes, because our product is sugar cane. It's not sugar. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. why it, 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 the, the law was designed to, to uh, benefit the sugar cane farmers. Talking to some farmers, they say, Gaplatu ang presyo sang kalamay subong eh. Over the past, like, five, six years. And that's why. So, so it cannot be your only uh, economic driver because it may not have... Uh, uh, a bright future. Is it the call center industry? That's one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the call center industry is one that you can you can develop. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, Ilongos are known to have a very nice pronunciation of the English language, mm. and that's why it attracts a lot of uh, BPOs here. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, aside from from BPO or call center, we should expand that. And, and uh, to me, the, the, the best direction would be the technology industry. You, know, you, you have, uh, you know, uh, Negros is known to have a lot of green energy. So using that, leveraging that, and inviting uh, IDCs. No? Mm -hmm. Internet data centers are, are actually the most uh, users of power in the whole world. Sila may pinakadamo usage of power. Because they, you know, they run 24/7, um, and as the pandemic, you know, moved a lot of people to do online transactions, so more data centers are actually being put up. Mm -hmm. So banks and, and uh, foreign governments are already saying, if you expand in internet data centers, make sure you use green technology, so that we will have a, a sustainable environment. And that is where you come in. As consultant, well, those, those, yeah, those are the things we, we just discussed. That so we, mm. we're we're trying to to pivot um, Negros Island no? uh, uh, to capture uh, the trend in the the technology industry.